Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I think Shanti might be a little bit frozen right now, but that's okay. Um, I know. I know. It's, oh, and I think my vocals are going out. Hold on one second, guys. <laughs> Let me actually spray some holy water here and just call on Michael and Gabriel, our buddies, to come down and just make sure that the equipment. I feel like I'm spraying like a like like smells bad no this is holy water <laughs> just to get <laughs> get our angelic forces in here to well, carry. i'll take some of that thanks i'll take some of that yeah <laughs> at least we can laugh about it and have a sense of humor that's something the darkness can't do the darkness doesn't know how to laugh so <laughs> so I am super excited because I've got one of my besties here, Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa. And I am so excited about this episode because Shanti, you know, you and I have so much in common. Like we have so much in common. We, we've had a lot of the same opportunities in life to really study with great teachers and travel the world and really um, dissect our own selves. And something I respect so much about Shanti is she's such a great teacher in the sense that she acts as a conduit because we know, and most people watching know that nobody can heal us, we have to heal ourselves. But the role of the teacher is to be that person that's there to help guide you and keep you focused on what you have to do. And Shanti is so amazing at being able to help people understand um, their own power when it comes to their own healing. And I think she froze again and hopefully the, the recording, you guys, I apologize if some of the recording sounds a little scratchy. Oh, there we go. It's scratching again. Um, Shanti, should we, should I send you a new link and we do this? I mean, I don't, are you hearing the scratchiness? You guys? I can hear you fine, actually, Bryce. Uh, so now and again, you'll freeze up, but I hear your voice. Okay, good. So, yeah, so I think uh, maybe let's see how it goes from my side as well. Perfect. And then, yeah, I'm not sure. My internet looks okay for, yep. for the moment. Well, but, I'm just yeah. going to just, just to say if there's any entities, human or otherwise, that are in the space right now that are trying to stop this recording from happening, you do not have our consent or my consent especially. You do not have permission to be here. Um, this is an important episode. We know that this is the this the understanding of sovereignty and, the, and that your responsibility for yourself is like the, the key to breaking through into this new timeline. And so um, if there are any forces here, human or otherwise... Um, that are trying to stop this. We, you, you don't have my consent to be here in my computer, in my Zoom. You have to leave. Um, you have to leave. And as our friend Jesse says, if you don't leave, you're going to have to go to the throne room of God and be dealt with there. You don't have my consent, so you got you to skedaddle. So... <laughs> Skedaddle. <laughs> Skedaddle. <laughs> what was it my my Latin teacher used to say in, in uh, school? Make like a hockey goalie and get the puck out of here. So, um, <laughs> so get the puck out of here. Uh, I love that Latin teacher. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Um, so this, what we're going to talk about today is something that I had talked to Shanti. Shanti's done her bowl sound healing on me privately. It's amazing. She's done it with Stephanie privately. And I've heard incredible things from Stephanie. And I've talked about it on my episode before about, and a lot of people want to know more about this. And so before I hand it over to Shanti, what I'm going to say is that in Ayurvedic healing, which is the sister science to yoga, the three elements of life are food, breath, and vibration. The vibration is many things, most importantly, sound. And so, um, Shanti, I'm going to pass the ball over to you and let you kind of <clears throat> start where you want to start. How did you find sound healing? What got you into practicing this modality for people? What does it do for people? It's amazing. Oh, firstly, beautiful. Bryce, thank you so much for having me as a guest on your show. Love being here and really enjoy yeah absolutely the commonalities we share it's always so fun of the journey that we've been on so and i want to just say i'm sorry i know my internet sometimes does play up for some reason the past month or so it's been particularly bad but it's we've had tons of load shedding 
I mean, off the charts. So I'm not surprised the load shedding probably affects our cell phone towers as well. Okay. Anyway, so sound. Wow, what a beautiful energy element to work with. Let's never forget the universe was created from sound mm -hmm. as well. So sound is, it forms the essence vibration of every human soul, which means that when it comes to healing and balancing and bringing back ah, the beauty that we feel and enjoyment of life, <clears throat> sound is a key player. There have been lots of stories that we've heard about people that have also, like, let's just say, for example, been in a bad car accident or had something happen, and they've literally healed through not necessarily the modality I use, but music and sound. So we know, anyone knows how good you feel when you listen to a beautiful piece of music. We know how, uh, how certain music really strikes on our emotive chords, you know, and it brings up emotions, it brings back memories, you know, it brings us joy, we dance, we celebrate, you know, we connect. It's a very connective element as well on so many different levels. So as most people who know me know, I'm kind of self-taught. I, I, I definitely believe um, I was born with the knowledge that was quite uppermost in my consciousness. So I, from a very young age, I started looking into things and just remembering things and sitting pondering things as a little kid and wondering how on earth that connected with that. And, oh, there I see that, you know, I could, it was stuff I could never speak to anyone about. There were many things like that, but it all made sense to my spirit. So I don't exactly remember when the Tibetan, the Tibetan singing bowls entered my life, but it was maybe around 15 years ago. But my partner, Dominic, bought me my first Tibetan singing bowl. And I want to tell you, from that moment, I could play it within three minutes. It was the most natural thing for me to play. I immediately knew how I was going to integrate it into my healing practice, what I needed to do with it, and how I needed to use it. I then also knew just intuitively that if I put water into the bowl as well, it would bring out a different resonance and a different vibration, and it would kind of uh, 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 awaken energies within the person that I was working with in another way, because at the end of the day, as you quite rightly said, Bryce, as a healer, I don't heal you. You know, I will show you what I see and what I perceive, and that's where my intuition comes in. And you will then do what you need to do for yourself. I will be your guide and you'll hold your hand for a time, and then you go do it yourself, yeah. you know. So... The vibration of sound is very, very powerful. And soon, you know, the minute I get, had my first bowl, I have some of my bowls here, I just don't have that one yet. I then just started adding to my collection. And I bought in India. I mean, I've got beautiful stories about how my bowls came to me, just the most incredible bowls and how they came to me and how I worked with them and how God just showed me what I need to do and how to do it. It's the most natural thing for me. Yeah. So I then, so for the past about 15, 14, 15 years, it's been a very integral sound healing. I call it the Tibetan sound journey has been an integral part of my healing practice. So it's a very beautiful way it to get, get people to just relax and be at ease and at peace because when your body is at ease and at peace, that's when miracles happen. 
It's interesting if you guys are fun. It's, we've been a little delayed on the last episode of Tartaria, but for a lot of the people who are watching this Tartaria and following along with us, this is what they knew. This is what they used the cathedrals for, was for sound vibration. And Shanti talks about putting the water in the bowl and it changes the elements and it changes. That's what they knew. So I think when you say that, Shanti, I think a lot of people, you were pulling up from a, a DNA or past memory, mm. you know, and that's coming from that natural. And even in the Bible, it talks about the word that God spoke the word. And that was the vibration of creation. I know in yoga, we call God, the name for God is Alma. And um, Patanjali speaks of this because he says, God has no beginning and end. It's a constant vibration of consciousness. So Alm is the only rightful vibration to talk yes. about God. And so it yes. all comes down to this. And, um, you know, with the body always changing, the laws of nature were always changing. So that in itself is its own vibration. I don't know about you, Shanti, but I've done this where I've gone up into like the North Georgia mountains and just sat very quiet for a very long time away from cars, away from technology. And you hear the vibration of nature too. You hear nature talking to, uh, okay. and it's beautiful. And it's, it's beautiful. And I know, can we talk a little bit too? I know like I have on my playlist, I have all these different like chants too for different chakras and how even the chakra system is aligned with different. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, if the vocals are going out again, I'm going to ask that only beings be here for our highest good. Anything that's not here for our highest good has to leave. We I don't consent. You have to leave. But um, even like Muladhara, the base chakra has this lower, gl more gl deeper type of very grounding. And that's the one I listen to the most because if your first one's off, they're all off. So I always start with the first one. Um, can we speak a little bit about that? How the different sounds hit different parts of the, the consciousness of the body too. Yes. Absolutely. You're going to find that each of the chakras resonate with their own musical sound. Mm -hmm. So that's why when people do specific music healing or healing with sound, they will often use the vibration that aligns with the chakra. Okay, so that chakra will have a certain vibration, which of course the body parts relating to that chakra will also be attuned then to that vibration because Every body part is related to a chakra in your body. And I want to just say this again. You know, you don't have to resonate with the Eastern teachings, which is about the chakras. But it's been proven scientifically that we have energy gateways in the body. And they are known in the Eastern teachings as the chakras. So they're like doorways in the body. And... <clears throat> Each one of those doorways is either going to be rusted or what, you know, whatever you want to call it, if you want to look at it in that way. So it looks after certain emotions. There are emotions, and then those emotions relate to body parts as well. So it's just one, everything is interconnected. So when you, when you for example, um, let's say you have a liver problem and you want to look at because the first thing with anything is we have to understand it's energy first, yeah. physical second. Mm -hmm. So the energy creates the physical. So the, the frequency of the invisible creates the, the manifestation of the visible. And the first thing it manifests, in is, uh, the first way it manifests, obviously, is in your body. So if you've, if you've created a liver, liver issue, okay, um, uh, firstly, we've got to look at how, what, the, uh, what the symptom is. You can have your symptoms, but then we start looking at the source of it. So then we start looking what the liver means and, you know, what emotions you're storing in the liver. So what I first do is then I will play sound. Like my gift is, I attune to my client's frequency and I then read that, read their frequency like a blind person reads Braille. That's the only way I can explain it. So then I will communicate via frequency 
as to where the issue in your body began. Was it as a child? Was it coming later on? And your body talks back to me. So then it'll show me pictures or I'll get a sense of something of where it began. And if it was, for example, as a child of three years old, when your parents got divorced and the shock of that was so huge for you, because rest assured, that creates a break in a child's energy. Yeah. And that's going to create, if the child has not received healing, it will create various manifestations as they grow older. Mm -hmm. So then what I'd go there and I first use the sound and somehow I'm able to work with the sound to align with that and just realign the frequency and allow the energy to start flowing again. Because what happens when we traumatized or in pain or ill Literally, think about energy like hair, okay? It's like, psh, it f flows in a very, very high vibrating way, like fine strands like, like hair, finer than hair. So when your energy is aligned and, and you're in tune, it's like everything flows together and you just get focused and you know how to center and you kind of, tuned in and intuitively doing things and what have you, because you really are connected to the voice of God then. But what happens often is when we traumatized or stressed or whatever the case might be, we can imagine that that energy starts knotting up yeah. and it becomes like knots in the hair. Yeah. Anyone that's had knotty hair knows how troublesome that can be. Yeah. Nothing flows then, right? The energy can't flow. So then it, blocks as that's what we call an energy blockage now every part of the body means something mm -hmm. so then let's say that blockage is sitting in your heart center causing a heart condition on a physical level that <clears throat> was it's been bugging you for 15 years i will then go in and and work with the sound and it'll show me as I go deeper because now as the sound, which is the core frequency of the universe, okay, it then starts melting. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my internet unstable. It's okay. It, I'm still, it we're still getting starts, it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it then starts melting the blockages. It's like unknots that hair. Yeah. And the energy then starts flowing again. And suddenly, people who had hectic attachments to them, because remember, when you are full of holes in your energy or blockages, you magnetize more of that to yourself. <clears throat> so the first thing that starts going is the low vibrating frequencies or entities or demonics, if you will, attach themselves to that. Now, when we start playing sound, now what happens is I put my client on the plinth, okay, massage bed, close her eyes with like a little eye bag or his eyes, and for an hour I will <clears throat> lay the bowls on top. On top of the person she's saying, I believe, guys. Yeah. your body so literally that physically on top and i'll play them on your so can you hear me sorry carry on bryce that was no you put out there for a second yeah. so i was feeling and that you because i've done and you can do this over zoom because you've done this with me over zoom and stephanie but i've also had it physically done in india i went to a singing bowl temple and they did the same thing they turned the lights completely there was no light at all coming into the room no windows and the guy, I don't know how he was able to see that dark, but he would put the bowls around you. And so you would not only hear, not only would your, would your body hear the vibration of sound, but your body actually felt it too. It felt the vibration. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah absolutely. So, so yes, yeah, so I have different bowls and I've now learned and I'm self-taught with this, okay? It's all self-taught. So I, I've now learned... <clears throat> 
There are certain bowls, they like sets and they play together. Mm-hmm. So I play them together. And I've learned there's three really different types of sound free, uh, journeys that I do. You know, the one there and then another one for that and another one for that and another one. There's actually four and another one for that. So what happens then is any negative entity that has attached itself to you, A, can't deal with the free cannot deal with the vibration so it's like getting the muck the swampy sludgy slothy energies getting it moving and dissolving it i and i want to say this i don't tell it to bugger off okay i invite it to go back into the light yep so before this i have prayed and only god's energy surrounds what i'm doing so anything moving out of that person's body or whatever, already in my heart, I know is ready to go back to God in its enlightened form because yeah. everything is just the opposite of itself. So when you're finding a sludgy, gooey, sludgy, sluthy, ugly uh, type energy, it's really there because of pain and suffering, bam, and lack of love. So I then play it and I remind it, because now I can see it and I'm just saying, you don't have to be here, you can go back. And very often when the sound meets that sludgy energy, it becomes light and back in tune and dissolves and automatically leaves the body. And then what happens is the person then can identify what's their stuff and what's not their stuff. Because when their stuff is in a bad shape, they're going to attract more of that stuff and it's going to be overwhelming. So very often you'll see a person's aura that is gray. It's like they're walking around with a gray black cloud around them. So that's not necessary. And that would be their aura plus a whole lot of other stuff they've magnetized to them. So the sound will do a lot of clearing of that. So very often people, I mean, I've had people, her back, she had a, a, a disc out of joint, click in the sound journey, the back just clicked in. She wasn't able to walk for like three weeks or something. Oh, wow. And the sound just clicked in. Um, <clears throat> people have incredible breakthroughs, you know, uh, physically. The one woman's eyesight healed. Someone could hear. Someone could smell. They'd lost their sense of smell in a car accident years before that. And for the first time afterwards, she could actually smell and taste. It was like a miracle. So what I'm saying is stuff like this happens, yeah. you know, just by the person being ready. And as I said, my gift is I can see what's what in the body. So I like play and I like root out. You know, we talk about in the yoga and in, the, in Buddhism, they call it the, the, the sankara, which is like the misery of the mind. Yeah. So it's like rooting out, like you root out a weed. So you like root out and just offer it back to God. And yeah. that's how the alchemy works. So I'm not banishing anything. I don't do that. If anything has come to me, it's either going to banish itself if it's not ready for what I have to offer, or it's going to come into my space ready for healing. Optimization. Yeah. And that's what you guys, and I know Shanti, we've done videos with my friend Cindy too before. And Cindy is what part of what she does is she works with demonic attachments as well. And she says the exact same thing you say, Shanti, the exact same thing when she's, she's like, when I go to work with these, with these people who have like attachments, we'll say, she says, it's not about damning the, the, the demon to hell, but presenting it back to the light. And she said, it's like, I'm doing therapy with the demon to get it to understand that it is the light and it can go back. And, and to me, that makes way more sense than just damning things to hell because everything is energy. Nothing can be, no energy can be created or destroyed. It has to be transmuted. And so that makes way, and that, that to me is the God, the healing God. Trans, God. Trans- yes. Yes. And I think, I think she froze again, guys, but just be faithful. Trans- Transferred or transformed. Energy can never be. Oh gosh. <laughs> Are we back? Yeah, and Sorry, I was this, interrupting this you there. I... Well, and that's and that's why I don't think you know. That's why I keep telling people, you know, 
on this in this truth or great awakening you know it patabi joyce would always say like everything else is just a circus everything outside of you it's just a circus it's what's inside that's important it's what you so everything it's important for us and i was telling shanti before we started recording i'm focusing a lot on my channel with this too and we're still doing the fun stuff with the monday mysteries all that kind of stuff but to understand that you are powerful, your body has the ability to recognize healing and to recognize the vibration because that's where you come from. You know, we think about the soul. The soul is just consciousness, love, vibration. That's all it is. And it needs to reckon. And, and I will say too, I get this question a lot. I posted a video um, a couple of days ago from a, a, another Ashtanga teacher I know named Mark Roberts. And he's one of the kindest He's a, in my opinion, a walking example of, of what a, a yoga student is supposed to. He's very humble, even though he's got a beautiful practice, but he's talking about Dharma and he was talking about being able to surrender and allow yourself to flow with the universe. And so many people, and I understand this, don't know how to do that because they're in so much bondage of their own fears and their own anxieties that they really don't know how to let go and let the universe guide them and trust in that, that it's going to be guided. And sound healing is a really great way to even show someone what that sensation feels like so that when they go about their exactly. journey, they can reflect on that and what that's going to feel like. We see it in the chanting. I'm, I'm a huge uh, Vedic chanter. I, when I first started yoga, I never thought I would be a chanter ever, but it is one of my favorite things to do is to do. And I have a whole... Um, book with all my Vedic chants that I've learned in India. And it's interesting though, I will tell you what's so fascinating if you're studying a group of chanters is that all these different chants say and mean different things. One chant is going to affect me differently though than it might affect Shanti. There's a very long Ganesha chant that every time I do it, I start to sweat. I start to feel um, anxiety is being presented to me coming up, but the person beside me might not feel that. But when we look at these old languages like Sanskrit, we're looking at a light language and it's spoken yes. very intentionally. The words are hit very intentionally to hit that vibration. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know we, you know, Andy Bond, I don't know if we, you guys have watched any of my interviews with her. She's incredible. Um, she's a high-level survivor uh, ex, uh, 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 from the Shiroki tribe. Uh, and after her uh, SRA, went on a quest to India to discover the ancient truths. And also, we know that the yoga world, for example, has been infiltrated badly as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she found teachers and came across teachers who taught her, even the missing, because there's a lot of stuff that they haven't passed on to the West. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there was this woman who's part of that. Uh, she was family of those men, for example. Um, and she is now, she was one of uh, Andy's teachers, but she speaks about this beautiful language of Sanskrit. And as you say, it's the light language. Everything is a frequency. And how you project your voice carries, I read the voice all the time. It's lovely for me to hear someone on the telephone if I've never met them, because I can, just the way they project their voice and the vibration you pick up from their voice says everything. And it's how that vibration connects to your vibration and what does it connect with? It's so beautiful. And it's all about sound. It really is all about well, and that's why yeah, I told, that's amazing. why I learned Sanskrit was because I mean I have a Sanskrit teacher in India, and it's so I had the opportunity to learn it uh, because I wanted to be able, able to read text. text. That that okay entities that don't need to be here, you can scoot along. <laughs> uh, but that I wanted to be able to read the text for myself. I wanted to be able to to study that for myself and read the uh, Vedas for myself and read the Upanishads for myself. And, and, you know, and luckily I had the opportunity at my school to have a scholar work with us with that and, and learn. And it came very naturally. And I am not like a language person. I did not, I, my French is, I had to study French in school. It's terrible. But for some reason I learned Sanskrit. And I think it's because the soul does recognize it does. Yes. Regardless <laughs> of whether you spoke it before in a past life, it's the vibration because it is, 
know, the story of Sanskrit is that Shiva came down and gave the language to the people. And so they're literally telling you in this story that a being, a higher density being came down and gave the language of Sanskrit to the people. So that's telling you it's a light language. And yes. so that's valuable. It's a valuable um, uh, healing tool in itself, modality in itself to be able to understand how that language vibrates itself through through the conversation and and yeah if i mean it's crazy to see these these old very old chants that are still just so powerful as the vocals are going out again still so powerful and pulling up um issues that need yeah. to, that need to be seen um and so, and so, and that, and I know people might say that about, I feel like Latin's more of a, a lower language than Sanskrit, but there's probably other languages out there that mimic that. And you look at the way Sanskrit's written too, it's almost written like notes. You know, they use yes. the caricatures. Um, and it's almost like it's notes on a, on a, on a music yeah. sheet. Music you, sheet, yes. I was about you, to say that. And you think about like when a, you're a mother, Shanti, I know all my friends and my sisters who've had babies, it's a natural instinct I see for women to want to sing to their children. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And, and, and while they're still in the womb as well, and to want to play music to them. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, like how many moms, especially lately, want to have water births at home. So it's like having water births and music. And, you know, so we're already becoming more aware um, on the planet of the benefit of giving birth to our children in that environment, which is amazing. So, yeah, I, was, I mean, it's incredible. Honestly, sound is incredible. Sorry. I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about giving birth and like, we know, I mean, I remember setting this, one of the biggest traumas you go through in this life is birth, going through the birth canal. We know that, that there are just, yeah. you know, to be in a warm womb where you're, you just hear your mother's voice and sometimes the father's voice, you're protected. And all of a sudden you're forced out into the elements of the air, the lights, you know, it can be very, be very traumatic for us coming with me. It's, we have to come through it, but it's, it sometimes can be very abrasive. And I was thinking about that. I was like in the hospital, a lot of the times the mother is not the first person to touch her baby. The first mm -hmm. person to touch her baby is the doctor. And I was thinking yeah. about that. Like what would happen if we shifted that, like with the water birth and the mother was the one to be able to pull the baby up because even with the voice of the mother and the skin of the mother to feel that, the baby's going to recognize the touch of the mother but from the isn't, voice. Isn't that what some of the cultures do? I don't know. All I know is white women just. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Out. I know. And, I'm, and, and I am, it's just occurred to me as you were saying that. I know that a, a, some of the tribes, a lot of the tribes in Africa, that's how the women give birth, actually. They, they take their own up. children, you know, they, they, they deliver their own babies, which is quite incredible. And that's maybe yeah. how it should be. Or if the mother can't do it, have the father pull the baby out because at least the, the baby's familiar with the father's voice as well. I know a lot of men who will talk to the belly of the mother when she's pregnant, just so the baby hears the father's yeah, voice yeah. as well, yeah. you know, and hears yeah. that and they're not hearing the words. They're literally hearing the vibration coming through, you know? And so how different would that be for us as humans? If moving forward, the next generation is welcome to the earth, to their yeah. life yeah. by recognizing that vibration of sound through the touch of the mother or the father, instead of the doctor or the midwife, no offense to the doctors or the midwives, Sure, they're great people too, but it's just that familiarity because within our DNA, yeah. you know, we carry the vibration of our, you know, we, we have inherited karma that we inherit through our DNA. And so we're already carrying vibrations from those two parents anyway as babies. And so to have that recognition, you know, how much healthier would we be as a society um, if that's how we birth babies? Absolutely. And I, and I mean, I think it's important to realize or to say just on that point that a doctor or a midwife definitely needs to be present, I think, in the birthing of a child. But I do think that the father, uh, if not the mom, then the dad should be the one that's catching the baby with the doctor's guidance, maybe. maybe. Yeah, absolutely. That's. I remember when my nephew was 
his hands under it or something, you know? Yes. yes. And someone really don't want us talking about this, Shanti. <laughs> It is so crazy, bro, we're like, right? We're like public enemy number one. <laughs> we do like all oh, these girls. <laughs> these girls are causing some problems. I, I, um, you know, I, rem- I, you know, when my when my nephew was born, and I know OBGYNs they birth babies all the time. That's so they're so used to doing it. But the the person delivering Charlie was on the phone my nephew with her child because her child was getting ready for the prom. And so while she was pulling my nephew out of my sister, she was talking to her daughter on the phone, you know, which, oh, wow. but how disconnected, you know, and um, yeah. we know that the fathers cut the umbilical cord, but that's the thing too. I've, I've, I've been studying with the umbilical cord. We cut the umbilical cord too soon. You know, the baby yeah. needs to, the umbilical cord will tell you when it's time to be cut. And the baby needs to still have that connection for a while before it's cut. Yes, but uh, isn't it isn't it that the umbilical cord actually dries off, disconnects of itself? It will. It'll start to it'll change colors, and it, apparently that's why they yeah, don't dries up. water births is because in a water birth, the umbilical cord naturally will just stay attached for longer because of the set the setup, and so. In the conspiracy world, they want to cut it right away because that's stopping some of the Sorry. necessary stuff the baby needs from from finishing its its course into the baby so but it's all it's all vibration guys water carries vibe i mean you look there was a study i think we talked about this in tartaria um but they do it with plants too where they had two different waters right Mm -hmm. and they they showed Mm -hmm. the different the tiers of like anger versus happiness and how that vibration changes the actual form of the water the crystals yeah, they would have they would have bottles and say I love you to the one and I hate you or you're ugly to the other. And the same thing with they they do that experiment a lot with rice actually. And I did it with a group of my students not too long ago with rice, putting it there. And how interesting! Rice standing near the television went gooey within a few days. Yes, showing you the, all those. Yeah nasty wow. frequencies so it's done with water or it's done with food and that's why you know it's it's a tool we use a lot with the kids as well oh, it's yes. like you know um because with that they can tangibly see it so we give them these little experiments to do so they can tangibly see how powerful their words are because if you keep saying i hate you i hate you i hate you to yourself and you're ugly and you're fat and you're mean and whatever, of course you can have a nasty life experience. But if you love yourself and you appreciate, oops, here we go again with my internet, oops. Well, <laughs> but if you love and appreciate yourself and you're able to, to, to look at yourself and like yourself despite what you perceive to be your shortcomings, your life will be so much happier and healthier and stronger. It really is true. It works that way. And I've seen many people have said, be careful. We, we always joke about ourselves and we kind of cut ourselves down in humor, but your body doesn't understand the difference between you being sarcastic and you not. So anytime we are self-deprecating, anytime it's causing a negative impact on ourselves, you know, it's so, it's so true. I want to actually segue into that, Shanti. I, I meant to tell you this before we started filming. I just totally forgot. I, you know, I, we've been talking a lot. I'm going to be offering an online yoga course for our viewers um, to help them start to understand the philosophy so that they can help themselves pick teachers and stuff on their own. And a lot of people have asked me about children in yoga, and I've given my perspective through now the Ashtanga practice. You don't want your small child because it's very serious. And it's, you know, Sharat just says, oh, just play yoga. But Shanti has a whole course for children following along with the yogic the self-healing principle sun kids and i know we've talked about it before but so many of my subscribers have asked me about their children and i was like i need to make sure i have shanti here to talk about this as well because you specifically work with children in this self-healing modality because teaching a child is obviously going to be different than teaching an adult and so can you just give a a little bit about that shanti so that my viewers who have children and want their children to be involved to start to get involved into self-healing which is i mean i wish my parents had done that for me like that's fantastic if you're and no no better hands than shanti and mornay when it comes to helping your children start this journey at at such a young age yes well 
we started, well, I started something called the Sun Kids many years ago. And a year ago now, we started, I uh, wrote a book. I then turned the book into a teacher's training manual. And from about a year ago now, I started training internationally online for teachers <clears throat> to, to become Sun Kids facilitators as well. So, yes, it's an amazing, an amazing experience. So we talk, we teach, talk, teach, blah, 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 blah. we teach them about meditation. Uh, firstly, the sun kids are guided and protected by the sacred white lions. So we, we enable them to make that connection first. So then they start connecting to the, the white lion spirit guide. Um, which is the, 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 it's like the Christ consciousness of the animal kingdom. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, so then we, we, it's, it's talking about, we, we work with the white lions. Gosh, they'd learn about cells and DNA, learn about energy, how it works. How do we create happy cells? How do we create a good body? The chakras, all of that, uh, reflexology, planting. I mean, it's a complete syllabus. So, yes, if there's anyone who's – and we're running kids' workshops online on Zoom as well once a month. So um, I'm also going to be start, starting to teach at one of the local uh, home schools here for 10 kids in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be doing stuff with them again and also then moving hopefully with a group of teenagers. So, you know, it really is. There's, you know, the whole objective here is for kids to realize – that the power lies within them and it always has. Kids have a natural ability to know this. It's the parents that have lost their way and then they influence the kids. Yeah. So the minute the parents have attuned to reconnecting, they automatically want to show their kids a different way and a connected life. So it's about learning this stuff, the adult version that I teach, but I teach it in kid form. So animal communication is another thing they do there, you know. So it's about learning how to focus your own energy, how to transmute your energy, how to, how to realize when these things are not working out for you, how to look at others differently, how to perceive, teaching them compassion, you know, stuff like that. So everyone comes in with compassion. It's like a blank slate. Now the question is, do we learn to be compassionate or do we learn to shut that down and yeah. become something else? Yeah. So this is the thing with the kids. And as far as the yoga is concerned, yes, uh, there are yoga postures and stuff with the kids' yoga, but I do agree with the Ashtanga principle. Child, I don't believe, should be doing yoga until the age of eight or nine. Yeah. Before that, yes, absolutely, run and play because then it's be, you know, you do like, Roar like a lion, ah, yeah. you know, uh, the swim like a fish, and they go into some of the different postures, but it's more playful, yeah. really, to understand nature. And, you know, they play more the yoga games and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't let a child do yoga, and especially not because their bones are still soft and they're still forming, although it's very good for flexibility and stuff. So yeah. you want to you wanna just make sure that, yes, teach them gymnastics, teach them the power of their body, stuff like that. You know, teach them how to get control of their bodies from a very young age because I also feel, especially with people who've been violated, mm -hmm. a great part of the healing is to do a physical practice, whether it's yoga or gym or something like that, but where you feel in control of your body again, because so many people, when they're young and they've been violated, felt completely out of control. And the minute you start doing any form of exercise or strength or just feeling better about your physicality, everything also starts changing. You know, everything is works together. It's all absolutely. Well, that's why in, in, in Ashtanga, like, and I, I'll say this again, guys, because I know um, Shanti's more, the lineage that I practice is a very extreme, the asanas are it, it, leg behind the hand, head, standing up with your leg behind your head, catching your, it's extreme. And so 
the teachers are very, very, very strict about children being in. You, the children could come to my store and watch. There's lots of kids that come and watch. And there's pictures of Sherat holding babies while he's adjusting. And Dave agreed with kids on his shoulders while he's adjusting. But the work that's being demanded in Ashtanga is, is for adults because it's, it's a very serious um, look at yourself and a very, what is it? My friend Harmony says like hyper drives your karma. We don't want children in that situation that young because they are still growing. The, the, the demands of the, os, the postures in Ashtanga are too much for children who haven't finished growing yet. Who's, who's, we have, we do have high schoolers come to AYA to the morning MISO program. And we're very, we only work with them like, like up to half primary series because their bodies are still kind of like baby deers where they're still kind of don't know, you know, they're wobbly and they're, they're just still trying to get into that body. And it's growing so fast and changing. And so that is why exactly why Sharat says play yoga with your kids play. Yeah. It. And once they're done with the, if they want to learn the sun citations, but they're done, let them go off and play. Don't make them stay on their mat and keep going. Just let them go off and play. You know, it's, it's, um, let them have that freedom of being a child before they have to then work through the childhood as an adult. <laughs> but, but that's why Shanti is so good at what she does because she's geared that towards children and, and trying to teach them these, these practices before they move into adult hood um and and when that when the practice gets even more serious and, and they're able to then implement into a, a stronger healing modality and so what i'm going to do shanti if you don't mind i want to do a follow-up with you and i want to ask our audience watching right now for questions if you have any because i know for a, i feel like shanti maybe you i feel like sometimes i forget that people haven't had the opportunities that I've had or that you have. And so some stuff that seems common knowledge to me at this point isn't for people who are coming straight out of corporate America or straight out of the matrix. And so I want to propose to our people watching right now, what are your questions for Shanti when it comes to sound? And also what are your questions about, because you've asked me a lot about child's yoga, and that's why I wanted to bring Shanti in, because I'm not a teacher. for I've dealt with children in yoga, but I'm not specifically a child's teacher. So um, ask your questions down below so that in part two, we can go deeper into your own understanding. Now, Shanti, yeah. I hate to put you on the spot, but if one of my subscribers, I was about to say one of my students, <laughs> one of my subscribers <laughs> wants a, a healing lesson with you or a healing hour with you, and they live in the United States, You've done it with me over Zoom. You can do it with them over Zoom too, correct? As she freezes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, and I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Gosh. Yes, hands. yes absolutely I can. It's, it's, <laughs> so it's, it's, look, it's obviously not the, you, you, it's not the physical experience you're going to get. But with this whole lockdown thing, and you were certainly one of the people I tried uh, tried the, the, to see how it would work over Zoom. And, it and it's pretty effective. Yeah, pretty, it's pretty effective. So I'm going to say to you, well, I tell you what, any of your subscribers that want to, let's say, have a, have a, have a sound journey or I do a a package of three as well. I do healing sessions as well. We're also doing a big promotion on the Sun Kids Soul School facilitators right now. If you want to do this, uh, be, become a Sun Kids Soul School facilitator, uh, we're doing a big promotion on that right now as well. But uh, Bryce, get them to, uh, if they can then contact me, uh, give your name, email okay. me. With just put uh, Bryce as, as in a viewer, and then what we'll do is we'll work out a 15% discount. Amazing. Yeah. I wasn't even fishing for that, Shanti, but that's awesome. That's great. That's awesome, guys. Yeah. So, Shanti, when we get off, I want you to send me all of this. I have your email, but I want to make sure it's the appropriate email for, for um, our viewers. And I can just put all that down in the description guys uh, box, guys, with everything. With I know I have a lot of your, your links already for some kids and stuff, but I am telling you guys, Shanti stepped in with me when I was going through the um, probably the darkest time of my this last year I've been through. And my experience working, I mean, I've done it both in person with a, with a teacher in India and now with Shanti on Zoom. I had the exact same experiences. It was, you know, obviously different situations were coming up, but doing it over Zoom, there was no difference for me 
than doing it live in person. I felt everything. I felt everything that was coming through the Zoom. And so if this is something that, especially I feel like if you're new to healing, as I said, this is something that is, will tap into your deeper knowing that maybe your brain doesn't know, but your soul does know. And so, um, and Shanti is amazing at what she does. She's amazing. So um, I will put that all down in the description box below for those who want to just go ahead and do it. But for everyone else, if you have questions, yep. <laughs> so I want to just, so if you guys don't know what a Tibetan singing bowl is, that's what it is. Okay. And I'm going to just, uh, I hope my internet doesn't uh, go wonky now. But just to give an idea of what it is, so that's what it sounds like. You hear it? Yeah, very lightly. Yeah, light, it's, it's cutting in and out. little bit we hear a little bit yeah it's cutting in and out okay okay <laughs> so obviously not today the... say not today <laughs> well let's try with the other one maybe this one works better uh-huh because then there's a little one those two always play together the one i've just had so that's kind of like what they sound like and I have a whole array of them and I play them together. And as I said, you know, what I do for each person is because I see where it is, it's like no experience is going to be the same with two people because I played to you. It's like I serenade your body yep. and I will work with your body and use whatever I need to with your body. And in that way, we then do it. And yeah, it's just as I said, it's a very find it difficult to talk or someone who finds it very difficult to express themselves and just doesn't know what to say or doesn't want to talk. Very often that's the first thing I will do is I'll just give them a sound journey because that kind of brings things into perspective and somehow they find a way of expressing or opening up or just allowing things to flow again. And yeah. that's where the healing sits, you know. It's not with the, the sound is going to open up the energy highways. Absolutely. It's your job to keep those highways clear. That's yeah, your absolutely. job. Absolutely. Well, and that don't be surprised, you guys, if, if you're doing it all of a sudden. You, you start crying, tears come up or something. It's, it's, that's very normal. She's saying, even though there's not no talking, your, your brain, you know, in the yoga world, we, our brain is what gets us in trouble, right? It's like literally Patanjali is like, you think too much. That's your problem. The soul knows though. The soul knows things that your brain doesn't know. And the body, we always yeah. say the body knows more than the mind does. The body is smarter than the mind. The mind is literally, the job of the mind is just to keep you alive. That's it. But it thinks it's more than that. So, you know, and so your soul will recognize things that maybe your brain can't quite express, you know, and that's, that's what's so beautiful about the sound healing. Um, and yeah, it's tons of bowls, guys. It'll, they'll, they'll be good. Sounds just going off. And it is specifically for you because no human being has the same exact issue sometimes similar but coming from different wounds coming from different places of, of instability and that's all that's all you know the matrix world has made us feel like we're a slave to our body that if things happen it's just the way it is but no you're the conductor of this you're the conductor yes. and so that brings your power back to you and that's what shanti's job is is in my job off of youtube is to help you find your way back home but yeah, you find your absolutely. way back home so, Absolutely. so yes, guys, I'm going to put everything down in the description box below. Um, I do eventually want Shanti to play a little song so we can put it up on the, <laughs> on the channel. So y'all can hear a little bit, just have that go to emergency <laughs> when you need to like, oh, yes. chill out for a minute. Um, and, and I do think too, you know, I, I look at the future of us moving into a new timeline, whenever that, that happens. And I do think that instead of like hospitals, they're going to be sound healing temples. Yes, that's Absolutely. Gonna, that's how our ancestors did it. And if we if we just go back to the whole Tartaria thing, 
and we look at that, they used to have water healing centers where healing, and of course the water was infused with sound, which gave the water crystals its specific healing shape. Because if you're looking at um, uh, Maseri Morto's work, we took the different water or the different waters from the different lakes, etc., froze it, photographed it. Each, you see the little crystals and how they work uh, and how they shape. So sound is such a beautiful, sound creates that frequency and vibration, which then reshapes the molecular structure of the water, which then enables healing because it then resonates because the human body is made up of, what, 80% water? I was about to say, yeah, water. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so, yeah, it's like 80% water, yeah. And water can be shitty too. You can have gunky water, very poisonous water, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can have the, the, the healthy water. So, you know, the sound will transmute the energy of the water. It you, does. You see it in, um, in rivers and streams. I mean, up in the north, in Atlanta, we're here at the base of Appalachia. So we go up to the mountains a lot like two hours north and you go these rivers and these streams and we know as, as Georgia residents, like if, if the water is stagnant, you don't let your dog drink that water because it's gross. It's stagnant, but if the water is free flowing, it's clean water. It's crisp water. It feels different. You can let your dog drink yeah. that water. It's the same that stagnant water versus that, both water. It's just, how they're composed themselves we want that free flowing clean healthy water and that's what that sound is going to do for you guys so i thank you guys for hanging in with the with, with our equipment today um and i love you so much shanti i'm so excited i can't wait to get you back on so we can talk about this further ask us at your questions guys let us know um, any confusions you have, because I'm so glad so many people are coming with like, because there is, we do have a form of the yoga world that's been corrupted as well. There is a side of that, just like all religions where they've come in and corrupted. And so, but we have to remember that the darkness, if you think about photosynthesis science, the darkness cannot create anything. It can only mimic and steal from the light. And so it's part of our duty to, just like we're cleansing with sound, we have to cleanse all these practices and bring them back to their original template um, because they were created by the true healing source God creator that we're all, all part of. And that's what we're, we came here to, as Shanti says, we came here to learn what we're not. Exactly. We came exactly. here to learn what we're not. And so I thank you guys so much. Again, leave your questions down below. I'm going to put all of Shanti's links in the description box below. I encourage you guys, if you're thinking about doing sound healing, you can't go wrong. Nothing. You can't go wrong. It's, it's, it's just such a beautiful healing modality. So as my, as my equipment, they really don't want to talk. They don't like us together, Shanti. <laughs> They're like, oh shit, these do again. <laughs> <laughs> These troublemakers. Yeah, up, honey. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I will be back. Stephanie and I will be back this Monday with Shanti for um our mystery Mondays. We missed it last week because Stephanie was under the water. We're gonna be talking about black eyed kids and orphanages. So Ooh. very interesting. So <laughs> very interesting indeed. We I look forward to that. So really Thanks. looking forward to that and catching up with you guys again on Monday. Favorite Melbourne Sunday. Yay. I know. I love you so much, Shanti. I love morning too so much. And I will see you guys soon for, for Monday. And you guys again, happy weekend. Check out Shanti's links below and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye guys. Thanks everybody. <laughs>